So if we look at something that's really common, peripheral sensitization, and take, for example, inflammation. Somebody has an ankle sprain, the ankle is inflamed. There are changes to the tissue chemistry. There's inflammation within the tissues. And so these receptors or ion channels will be activated, an action potential will be generated and transmitted through the nervous system. A couple of things happen that allow the system to be more sensitive or these action potentials to be generated more easily. One of them is that these ion channels open and get plugged open for longer. So they're just much more easier, they're much easier to, to, to be activated. The second thing that can happen is that we get more and different ion channels expressed at the end of the primary afferent neuron. So this is, again, will sensitize the, the nervous system and allow action potentials to be generated more easily. Again, these are really normal phenomena. And if you think about your, your person with an ankle sprain, you'll see things like primary hyperalgesia. Hyperalgesia is just a um, pain response to something you would normally think would produce pain. So if I pressed on your ankle over the lateral ligament and I pressed hard enough, it would generate a, a pain response. Primary hyperalgesia just means that in the area of the injury, um, the, the tissue is more sensitive and produces a painful response more easily. We might also see secondary hyperalgesia or sensitivity in nearby areas. And in this case, it's usually secondary to the spread of inflammation. So really normal phenomena that we see every day in clinical practice. And so it demands that we're really aware of the stages of inflammation across acute and subacute injuries, and that we know what's predictable for tissue healing so that we know when it's not following that pathway. Um, and that we're cognizant of what happens with chronic or recurrent inflammatory conditions. So think of osteoarthritis or rheumatoid arthritis.